Okay, class. Uh, good afternoon. So this is another topic in power plant engineering. So this is performance of diesel power plant. So the presentation in the performance of diesel power plant is uh, presented uh, maybe in several parts. Okay. So let us consider an illustration of a diesel engine. Okay. So you will notice that here in the illustration, if you look at the the figure, the mass of fuel will enter the the combustion chamber. So since diesel engine is a compression ignition engine, uh, the air of course is compressed to the uh, combustion chamber or to the cylinder or the mass of air will also enter the combustion chamber another here is the cooling water so cooling water is of course uh, very important uh, to be circulated inside the engine in order for water to absorb the heat of course generated inside the engine or combustion chamber so another of course here is the lube oil so in order for the rotating parts uh, to or to eliminate some friction from the rotating parts it requires lube oil and the lube oil also absorbs heat of course coming from the friction also Okay, so the mass of the exhaust, of course, will also goes out. Of course, the mass of the exhaust is the summation or the mass of the air uh, plus the mass of the fuel. Okay, so let us now proceed to the energy carried by the mass of fuel or carried by a fuel so the energy carried by the fuel is so called the energy chargeable so where that energy chargeable is equal to the mass of the fuel injected inside the combustion chamber of course per hour multiplied by the heating value of the of the fuel rather okay so take note that the power the build up inside this combustion chamber is called the indicated power and of course the indicated power will be reduced to brake power because of the friction inside the cylinder and the rotating parts of the crankshaft so we have here a mechanical efficiency in between the indicated power and the brake power so the brake power now is lower than the value of the indicated power okay so the brake power now will be delivered to the flywheel of the engine and the engine or the generator rather will receive brake power and the power developed by the generator is called electrical power okay so let us now proceed to the heating value of the fuel so heating value of the fuel is equals to 41,130 plus 139.6 degree EPI. So the unit here used is an SI that is kilojoules per kilogram. So solving for degree EPI if not given. So degree EPI is equals to 141.5 over specific gravity 
or a specific gravity at 15.6 minus 131.5. Okay. So, if we want to determine the specific gravity at 15.6, that is equals to 141.5 over 131.5 plus degree API. And the specific gravity at temperature T. So, that is equals to A specific gravity at 15.6 multiply 1.0007 minus T times 15.6. Okay? So, determining now the indicated power. Indicated power is equals to indicated mean effective ratio. Multiplied by the length of stroke, area of the bore, and the number of power stroke per minute divided by 60. Take note, the unit here is in SI. Okay? So, where IP is the indicated power in kilowatts. PMI is the indicated mean effective pressure in kilopascal. L is the length of stroke in meters. Area of the bore in meter square. In meter square, not meter. And N is the number of power stroke per minute or power strokes per minute that is also equals to 2 can over s where c is the number of cylinder a is acting so a is 1 for single acting a equals 2 for double acting and n is the number of rpm and s is the stroke so for two stroke engine s is equals to 2 and for four stroke s is equals to 4 okay so, indicated mean effective pressure if the engine utilizing an engine indicator. Okay? So, the mean effective pressure indicated, of course, equals to the area of the indicator card multiplied by the spring constant divided by the length of indicator card. And PMI now is equals to area times spring constant over length. Okay, so let us now uh, take this example. So in order to apply the formulas uh, above. Okay, so let us take now this example. A six-cylinder four-stroke engine has a bore of 110 millimeter and a stroke of 120 millimeter. When running at 640 RPM, an indicator card is taken which has an area of 420 mm square and length of 60. So, if the spring constant is 129 kilopascal per millimeter, determine the mean effective pressure and indicated power. Okay? So, given PMI, so the area of the indicator card is 420 mm square and the spring constant is 120 kilopascal per millimeter and 60 millimeter square or millimeter length. So, therefore, the indicated power or the PMI rather, indicated mean effective pressure is 840 kilopascal. And then substituting now this mean effective pressure to the original equation of indicated power and therefore. The indicated power is 30.7. Okay? So, another we have the brake power. So, what is a brake power? So, simply the brake power, of course, is the power output measured at the crankshaft by a dynamometer. Okay? Or plywheel power. Okay? So, that is the same. So, where BP now is the brake power, so in kilowatts, BMIP is the brake mean effective pressure, length of stroke, area of the bore, number of power stroke per minute, number of cylinder, acting, number of RPM, and stroke. So, these are all the same to the, or what is written in the previous slides. Okay? So, we have also 
determining the brake power in terms of torque. So where this torque can be determined using a dynamometer or a prone brake. Okay? So if we take a look at the the illustration here, we have a prone brake or mechanical dynamometer. So we're in we have here L or meaning this is the length of the arm. F is of course the net force and then a lever arm and then the wooden blocks. Okay. So of course if the uh, bolt of the dynamometer is tightened uh, the plywheel will of course uh, be gripped with the brake shoe installed inside or at the wooden block okay so the torque now can be equals to F net is equals to F gross minus F tear so what is this F gross so the F gross is the force measured by the weighing scale and the F tear is the weight of the brake arm so we have to deduct the weight or the yeah of course weight of the brake arm okay so taking again another example so in determining the brake power so this is now the example a single acting four cylinder four stroke cycle diesel engine with a bore to stroke of 22 and 28 centimeter operating at 275 uses fuel with 28 degree epi the load on the brake arm which is 90 and the or the length of the arm is 90 and the load is 120 kilogram what is the brake mean effective pressure in kilopascal okay so the given so we have here uh, to determine the piston displacement bd so that is equals to land the length of stroke area of the bore and the number of power stroke per minute so the computed value of the piston displacement now is 0 0.09757 cubic meter per seconds okay so the torque now is equals to f net multiplied by r where f net is equals to 120 kilograms so changing this 120 kilograms to kilonewton so multiplying it by 1.81 divide 1000 times 0 0.9 is equals to 1.05948 kilonewton meter okay so the brake power now or the brake mean effective pressure from the brake power formula so brake power formula is 2 pi tn over 60 so the brake power is 30.51 kilowatts and determining now the brake mean effective pressure if brake power is given and piston displacement therefore substituting values the brake mean effective pressure is 312 point 71 kilo pascal okay thank you very much this is now the end of my presentation